Hi everybody, welcome back to Spruverse, my scale model universe. People of Earth, welcome to part three of Build the 1350 Refit from Polar Lights. And uh, first of all, uh, I just want to uh, thank everybody who uh, has tuned into part three, <laughs> because this is an epic journey. It really is. And if you're hanging in there, I greatly appreciate it. If you like the content, please like and subscribe. It means an awful lot to me. Click on the bell too for a notification of, of my upcoming episodes. Follow me on Spruverse, my Instagram account, and drop me a line at uh, spruverse at gmail.com or drop a comment below. Whatever you want to do, I'm grateful and it's great to have you back for part three. Lots going on. Um, I've been moving around a little bit. Now, my, my punile brain works in a very, very different way to most people because uh, the reality of it is, is uh, here, let me get a, some more light on my face so you can see my beautiful face. <laughs> um, the reality of it is, is um, I, I, I can uh, start to focus on something and just to get you inside my, as I said, punile brain for, for 30 seconds, because that's about all most people can take, is all of a sudden I start processing 50 other things. What about this? What about that? What about this? What about that? And so I, I, it's not that I lose interest in something, I drift to something else. Now, the point of telling you all this is because now this kit is kind of spread out of, on, of the shop. There's an awful lot going on, and I'll, I'll try to share with you in this, in this update uh, a lot of what I'm doing and where I am and how I'm progressing. And uh, so I thought I'd start this uh, particular um, update, uh, as it were, with the fantail. Um, I am uh, building the fantail. Well, I, I'm, I, I should say I, I've, um, I'm building sort of prepping the fantail. It has insignia white on it um, and a couple of coats of primer. And what I'm doing right now is I'm inserting my, uh, my laser cut uh, crystals here for the fantail. I've installed one and uh, I, I thought I would sort of carry on. Now, um, this is, it, it's, it's, it's a sort of weird kind of awkward thing but you've you, you've kind of got to sort of line them up um, sometimes it's easier to get them from the back and then figure out how you're going to press these into place um, they've got a really nice tight fitting that they, they uh, but w once they're in too uh, I'll, I'll hit hit them with some micro crystal clear so I can uh, hold them in place so they don't, they don't pop out and uh, it is awkward, you know. Uh, it's one of the big reasons why I try not to do things on camera because, as you know, uh, we, we could spend the rest of our lives watching me fiddle with something for five hours. And I don't know how interesting that is to uh, all of you. Now, it would be interesting to some of you, but not, not, not to all of you. So this one doesn't want to... Oh, it does. There it goes. It did go, and uh, well, it's it's kind of no, it didn't it didn't go. Let's see here, Let's see if I can coax it in here without breaking something. It wants to go, but it just it's slightly, and what I'm concerned about is if I start grinding these which you certainly can do, it suggests that you do. Um, I'm concerned that I will start to, and they're very fiddly too, so, you know, it takes a lot of, a lot of patience to get them in. But once they're in, well, that's looking pretty good. That's looking real good. Um, and it's in, I'll be. Now, this one's lost its paper. Um, I've got these wonderful protective uh, papers here, which is why I 
keep claiming you don't need to mask these, but of course this one has pulled off and in the, in the process um, has got itself caught, but there you go. See how that looks? Now I've got a little bit of, uh, just a little bit of touch up to do, but that's okay. Um, but that is, it, it's sort of in, um, it's at a weird angle. Um, I'm gonna see if I can just push it through a little more here. There, there it went. Okay, that's pretty good. That's not super clean, but it's pretty good. So there that is. So you can see this one here has its protective cover on and I'll leave that. This one I'm gonna clean up the edges of and then um, I'll have to put something on that. Now the other thing I could do here, which is probably what I should do, is push it out. I've got one, I've got a few more. So now that I know this fits, I can actually push this out like that and clean this up a little bit. And um, that should go in quite nicely. There. Okay, I've got a new one. Come around the back and let me line this one up. See if I can't push this one in. It's always when you want to do something on camera that nothing cooperates. I don't know how that works. I think it's it's the perception that that's how it works but that's not really true it's kind of well now it would do that regardless kind of thing okay so they are cut left and right he does give you one, two of each so that's a good thing you're also kind to put up with this. Some of you are going, no, no, it's fine. I've got nothing better to do. I'm shaving. I'm brushing my teeth for bed. Oh, that slipped in beautifully. There that goes. So it just had a little bit too much paint on it. So we'll hit that with some micro crystal clear. Oh, fell out. Fell out. There it goes. Yeah, all right. So we'll hit that with some micro crystal clear. Okay. Well, you get the idea. I'm going to, I'm not going to continue to fight with this on camera. Um, yeah, it wants, it wants a little bit of micro crystal clear behind it, but that's the general idea. So uh, we can um, get out some micro crystal clear here and put some on here. Um, now, the thing about these, these laser cut acrylic crystals as well is that they tend to, they tend to want to They tend to want to sort of stay in place. I found I've had some good luck with them. So that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Let me get my. Yeah, that's 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 working quite well. So I've got 
uh, one, two, three, four, five of these to put in. And then that will be good to go. And I'll touch up just a little bit. I've got here, all dry and ready to go, is the Fantail um, 3D printed parts here. And they have got, if I take these off, if they've, they've been painted, I've been painting those, these, so, um, they have, now I'm going to need to light block the back of these, but if you, if you can see here, they've got these, uh, grids for, for, for lighting there, you can see that's pretty cool, right? So we will, uh, we'll be able to install those and, and I'm going to, I'm going to do a little dry brush with some silver just to give it, a, just to pick out some of that detail because there's so much detail on these fantail parts. Uh, you know, you'll, it would be a shame not to. Now I know a lot of you back there are going, well, that's not Canon. Uh, that's not how it lo <laughs> looks. And it's like, uh, I don't do Canon. I try to do Canon, but sometimes I, I, I just uh, don't do Canon. Um, this is my model. <laughs> And you've got your models, and we'll all build them together, and we'll all be proud of them. And I guarantee you, I've looked at, I can't tell you how many of them on YouTube, and everyone have various different variations of, of stuff, uh, whether it was a refit or A, but it's going to look pretty darn like the, um, the model should look. So that's exciting. Um, so... That is, that is what I'm doing, and, I, and I, I just keep continuing to build on parts. Let me show you what else. I've been working on the shuttle bay, and I've got all of the... Um, I'm just going to put the lid on this so it doesn't dry out. I've got uh, all of the shuttle bay parts, uh, photo etch parts on. It took about three hours. Uh, to do this. It's, um, but it's fun. Um, now this is raw. It doesn't have any decals on it. And uh, it doesn't, it, it does have a, any paint on it. This is just a, a sort of a basic uh, light block and, um, and, and just get those, you know, get that photo etch up, which I've done. And so I'm pretty happy with that. I probably should also uh, put some some people on on this um, just to give it some some drama but they're in uh, now the the one thing that um, I did have from the um, green strawberry uh, photo etch kit that you do not get in Paul's kit from Paragraphics is this beam and uh, this beam essentially is going to sit here like that. And what I really like about that is, is that when you look down the, the, the sort of the belly of this thing like this, uh, you get, you get this separation and I, and I like that. I, I think that that's a nice, I think that's a really nice touch. So I'm going to be, uh, painting that up and, uh, getting that, getting that in. Um, but these, these are, are sort of in progress as, as, as it were. And, um, so that's good. And then, uh, the other thing that's in progress is my, uh, la uh shuttle bay, uh, floor. Now I, I tried a million different colors, um, and I've sort of fallen in love with the, the, the NATO black because against the yellow, it's really going to pop. So um, I've hit this with a, a little bit of gloss and I'm going to be using uh, some of the decals and I may be using some of the masks uh, depending on um, my uh, state of mind <laughs> at the moment. The Aztec uh, decals that you could use to cover the entire ship um, came in a, uh, came in a, a, a pack from Polar Lights, sort of an aftermarket pack from Polar Lights. And um, it's, 
it's pretty it's pretty good so um i may i may uh depending on on where it is on on the ship i may use a few of those decals uh but primarily as you know we're, we're going to be using the aztec dummy masks from the great lou del meso we're going to be um uh applying those um and and painting it to its fullest uh, using his mask. So I'm very excited about that. Um, and uh, there'll be an announcement about that, <laughs> uh, probably around Christmas time, I'm not sure. Uh, but there is a special announcement ab ab about that. So, so stay tuned. Uh, I keep teasing it, I know. But, and you've probably figured it out by now. But uh, anyway, um, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this and I'm glad I, I, I put in the landing lights. Uh, you um, uh, could see those working in part two, the end of part two. So uh, they'll just need to be installed uh, once I've got all of this decaled and, and, and finished. And then we'll take a look at how this actually installs in the secondary hall because I've got an awful lot of wire and uh, cables and everything else that needs to bundle in there. And so we'll look at that together because um, that I'm curious about that. I'm curious about just exactly how that's going to work. We'll see. Uh, just uh, before we move on to the next segment, um, uh, I've primed everything. So we'll look at what I've been priming and how well I did and where I've got imperfections and what needs to be puttied. Uh, so we'll, we'll look at that. Um, and um, I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of leaning towards the decal sensor bands. Um, J JT Graphics has uh, a set uh, that I have, um, and I'm thinking very seriously that I might put the sensor band decals on this to really make it look crisp and punch it up. Um, although we also could be painting them, I don't know. I haven't I haven't discussed that yet with um, my guru, but uh, we will see. So anyway, lots going on. Um, and uh, in the next segment, like I said, we'll look at the primed kit. Um, we'll also talk about our chiller grills and how we're gonna attack those and uh, perhaps even put some lighting into the uh, lower portion of the secondary hull. Uh, we'll, we'll see how much, uh, how much we can uh, pack into this, uh, into this update, okay? So, uh, let's move on. Uh, so, while, uh, while we were advancing the ball, um, several hours have gone by. Um, from, I would say, from the... The very sort of beginning of the build to now, we're at about 15, 15 and a half, maybe 16 hours of, of work. Um, it's, uh, it's, it, it's interesting to sort of keep note of it. It's, it we're not, it's not a score, so uh, I don't want any of you to think that some kind of score <laughs> over here. It's just... Giving you a sense of, you know, how much time it's taken me to, to get to a various stage. Okay, so we have our first primer coat on just to kind of look at everything and, and see if we've got anything super nasty. Um, and also to see, you know, if we've got any major, major problems, which uh, we, we don't. Um, we've got some, definitely some areas of sort of where we, we we've got to sort of work on some 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 details here for sure um but for the most part um i am very very happy very very happy uh with 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 where we are um so this first coat of primer as i said just to kind of look at you know where we are where i am i should say and, um, and, f and, and sort of figure it out. Um, let's see, find my locator pins here, which are about there. Uh, I'm not going to push this on because I don't want to pry it off, but um, I just want to kind of take a brief look at it and just kind of see where we are. Um, just a couple of things. Um, 
really happy with my uh, laser emitters here. Uh, this is going to be just some a little bit of fiber optic through the through the through the laser emitters that I picked up on on uh, Shapeways. Um, towards the back here, um, one of the things that I'm now trying to decide is I've got to put my uh, my crystal in so um, that just has to happen before the uh, saucer can be closed up now once that happens of course I have to figure out how I'm going to mask it now I'm leaving the uh, the frame of mine dark gray and I've got that light blue duck egg color that's going to go around the um, the frame here. Um, now I've got masks for things so I'll take a look at where I am on, on the mask situation and, uh, and and I should be fine but um, there's a part of me that thinks that some of this masking and some of this work you know needs to be done uh, sooner than later. For sure the bridge, the AB uh, bridge uh, section I'm going to completely finish its paint um, before I install it because after consulting my guru <laughs> uh, we agree we both agree um, and he he agrees that uh, it's going to be a lot easier to manage painting this this section right here uh, with the duck egg and get that clean before I, I, I drop on my AB deck. But of course, don't forget, I've got to focus my floodlights here onto the top of the saucer here so it, it illuminates the, uh, the registry of the Enterprise. So I've got to do that. Um, looking at the back here, uh, at my lounge my VIP lounge um, I did pretty good I've got a little bit of cleanup to do right in here just a little bit um, which I will do and uh, we'll just hit that again but I'm really happy with how well that uh, that dupa color f fills in the gaps so um, I'm, I'm pretty happy now on the sensor bands didn't do so great. Didn't do so great, uh, but we, we can get there. We can clean this up. Um, I'm not sure if I can get this on camera for you. There we go. Uh, I've got some sanding to do here to clean that up. And I've got to uh, do a little bit of puttying here, you can see. Um, and as I go around, as I go around and I look, I've, I've noticed some ugliest areas here. Now, I've got a problem here with which I, I'm going to try and correct. Um, this particular section of window uh, did not, it, 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 it went in too far, so it doesn't have that beautiful, smooth, uh, finished kind of ergonomic feel that this one does. Uh, it's created a hard line shadow, so I'm going to have to try and take this out uh, and sand this down. So that's, that's, uh, that's one issue. And then as I go around and I look, um, I, I notice I've got some, some clean up here. But that's what this primer coat's all about, is to sort of help you identify where you've got some problems. Now, um, I'm gonna do the best I can to get this smooth and finished and looking crisp. But I do, I, I do have some decisions to make. Am I going to paint on the sensor bands with some kind of masking situation? Or am I going to go for the decals, um, which are lovely and crisp and, and look pretty good? Now, I've got se several um, packets of them. Over the years, I've collected them. D don't ask me why. You know, I... I, I I don't know, you know, I, I go into a hobby shop on my travels and I see something and I think, you know what, 
I'm going to get another one of those just in case you can't get them anymore. Now, I've, I have lack, lucked out, lucked out in a couple of situations where I have purchased a couple of things you just can't, uh, are no longer made anymore. And then, you, you know, you have them uh, until you don't. So it has paid off for me. Um, and I do have sensor bands. Uh, now, they are from Polar Lights. My J, uh, JL Graphics or JT Graphics, uh, I, I can't find them. I'm not sure where they are. And they're out of stock at Cult TV, man. And um, they don't appear to be available on the website. So I'm going to have to think about that for a second uh, and figure out what I'm going to do. But my suspicion is I'm going to go for a decal if I can, assuming they don't you know, disintegrate on me, which um, sometimes they can do. Um, this is really, uh, th this Dupa color has done a really nice job at, at, at filling in some of the scratches and nooks and crannies. Uh, so this is all going to get a light sanding now and uh, we'll, 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 see where, we'll see where that takes us. Now, so that's the saucer underway. The secondary hull is right here. And um, I'm I'm really happy with it now. Um, what I what I have done is I have um, I have glued and uh, tied these pieces together, and I've used uh, some five minute epoxy on the seams here to make it really solid. And I'm really I'm really happy with it. I've got some really nice uh, lines. I don't I don't appear to have uh, any issues at all in terms of my my joints um, everything seems to be pretty clean um, maybe a little little touch up here little touch up there but other than that i think it, it's pretty clean um, all light blocked and uh, my photo etch windows are in and i'm pretty happy with those um, they they went in really well and I used my uh, I used my water-based putty to uh, so that I didn't have to kind of over sand everything. Now, if you can see in the light, I've got a little bit of work to do here, just a little bit of work. But for the most part, that's pretty good. And and then. This seam right here, which why they engineered it that way, I don't know. But there's a little seam here, which um, I think it, it feels like a little bit of a bump to me. But with just a little dab of putty there um, and a little more filler primer, I think I can make that go away. The other side, super clean, super clean. Look at that. So um, I'm really happy with that. That is a result. So that is good to go. And what I can do now is um, I, I can start focusing on uh, just cleaning this up uh, and then I can um, move on to the next massive problem which we've got, which is this. Um, so this is your, your, your top. Um, it drops in here quite nicely. Now I'm not going to push down on it because I don't want to, I don't want to bust anything. These, but um, just at first glance, this is dropping in quite nicely. Now, um, let me just sort of line that up correctly. And I can, with a little bit of squeezage, pull all this together and I'm looking pretty good. Now, um, I'm going to have I'm going to have to, when I glue all this up, I've got a little bit of seam work to do here, but I don't think it's terrible. I don't think it's terrible at all. Um, there may be uh, a big gap right here, which it appears as though there may well be. I don't know if you can see that. Holy moly. Uh, so we're going to have to deal with that. Um, and I probably will use... Uh, probably uh, a little bit of epoxy sculpt on that because that's a big that's a big gap and I might what I might do is put a little card behind it you know or or use a little card because I I, I think it's a good way to um, I always think it's a good way to 
to seal some massive gaps because I always frayed with putty, you know, uh, it doesn't matter how much putty you put in there and how dry and rock solid it is. Um, if it's jiggled or jarred or something, you do run the risk of it popping out. So um, I think epoxy sculpt is probably the best way to go. Um, there is going to be a gap there, uh, I assure you, because uh, I'm looking at it and I can see it. So, um, but anyway, um, everything looks good there. Um, I have cut out my hole f f to receive my umbilical cords from the uh, neck and from the saucer. So everything will come down here and it will drop into, uh, drop into the hole here, uh, drop into this hole right here. Um, so after I've got my, you know, this is, this is going to be really interesting because after I've got my shuttle bay completed, it has to drop in here on top of my arboretum, which has to line up here. And then uh, I've got all of my uh, wiring harnesses. Um, I've got one wiring harness, which is supposed to live right here, and another one uh, which is supposed to live uh, under under here. Now there's quite a bit of room here uh, for this um, and you can see these pins here for the shuttle bay. Uh, it does sit up quite proud so there is room down there. So um, I think I'm going to be okay. I think I'm going to be okay uh, but we'll see. That's going to be an interesting part of this build and we'll, we'll work on that together uh, so that you can see what I'm, I'm thinking. Um, I have not uh, yet uh, found the need to uh, remove these strength pins. Haven't found the need to do it. Don't really want to. Uh, some guys recommend that you do it um, so that you can get more wire and stuff in there. But I don't know. I, I, I think these are not, you know, these are structural and I'm, uh, that makes me nervous. But we'll see. Don't know. Um, and then, of course, what I've got to do here is um, I've got to start working on my pylons, which means they're going to have to be attached to this piece um, so that I can then um, attach my, um, my pylon lights and my uh, ribbons for my nacelles because my nacelles have to, have to plug into this. And I'm not sure where. I have to look at that on the, on the instructions. But the idea is uh, for me to um, actually, uh, what I want to do is I want to I finish this, as I said, as a complete piece with the pylons in place. And that would be one piece. And then the saucer will be another piece. And then the nacelles, the two nacelles, will be the third piece. And that's how I'm going to uh, get it, you know, to, and then and, and then it'll be at that point, you know, sand, everything will be sanded nicely, putted, seams will be gone and uh, will be primed um, and not just primer number one, that'll be sanded and, and, and finished. It'll be primer number two to take this to uh, a, a whiter uh, color. And for that, I am I'm, I'm going to my go to, which is, of, of, of course, my uh, insignia white. I just, I, I love my insignia white. And so, um, progress, things are moving along. Now, what I don't know yet is because I haven't looked at the engineering of it properly, I'm about to do that. And when I do, I'll share that with you is once we start to try to put those pylons onto the, uh, the secondary hull, um, we're going to have to obviously make some space for these uh, umbilical cables, uh, these ribbon cables, which are, are they're, they're not thick, but they're not thin. Um, and they're going to have to lay in those pylons nicely. So we're going to be doing some grinding for sure. And I know from several of the videos that I've looked at that the, uh, these attachment points right here um, are, these attachment points out right here are too long. And so uh, what they do is, is they, uh, as I understand it, they, they put the pylons in the wrong position to actually seal this up nicely. And so by grinding these down a little bit, taking them down, it takes some of the stress off the pylon 
and that will allow us to actually uh, put the put the top on, um, squeeze everything together, and not not have pressure on this point right here because uh, apparently there's a lot of pressure on this point, and 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 so we'll be looking at that, and then of course uh, we're going to have to create some kind of a jig so that we can when we put our pylons in we are perfectly parallel and level uh, otherwise we'll have drooping nacelles and the whole thing won't look right so uh, again you know another thing to put on the list of things to think about uh, while you are working on this this model and uh, for this segment um, i've been doing a little just a little bit of dry brushing here this is the ceiling, uh, which you'll never see, uh, but I've, I've uh, finished it in my insignia and I've dry brushed it and I've put some washes in here and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go ahead and just clean that up because, um, you know, why not? Um, and then, you know, we'll photograph it for the, for the Instagram <laughs> uh, page uh, for posterity because you'll never see it again. Um, so there you go. So... Uh, and there is a there is a clear part uh, that that drops in here, and uh, so there is light that uh, will be shining down on this on this kit. You can see it, it it pops in here, and I do have a light above here, so we will get some reflective light, and that'll be good. So that's all coming together, um, and um, what I'm doing now, what I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to get going on uh, the saucer, getting that all sanded up now that we've looked at the primed version of it, and then um, I'll start doing some detail work on the shuttle bay um, and uh, figuring out whether I'm using decals or I'm going to look in the masking set because I'm embarrassed to say I don't have a complete inventory of what's in the masking set to see whether or not I'm actually going to paint on uh, my, my landing, um, landing lines. Although um, there is a stand clear that I was hoping to put on the floor of the shuttle uh, by the chase lights and it doesn't come with this with this kit I it might come with an aftermarket J, JT graphics kit but I I haven't seen it uh, not that I need <laughs> any more aftermarket parts by the way uh, but anyway all good so uh, we are progressing um, and uh, in the next segment, uh, I think what we'll look at is um, we'll, we'll, we'll take a, 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 a brief look at uh, the, um, the pylons and what we've got to do to get our harness into the pylons, into the top of the secondary hull. And uh, also, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get into um, those uh, chiller grills and, and getting those painted up. Uh, because I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm excited to do that, and um, we'll, we'll see where that goes. Now, uh, having said that, the bundle that I have, the harness, it comes with blue, it, uh, blue, uh, blue lights. Uh, they're, not, they're not purple, but we're going to hit them with some clear uh, to give them a, a bit of a purple haze, and I think we'll be fine, because we just want that warm light, and we, we want the essence of it all to be in the purple when they um, obviously when the chiller grills are on when they're not on um, because of the the nature of the uh, the the bit the piece and how close it is to sort of the dark shadows of everything it's going to appear black um, and so that should be that should be good okay so um, let's plow on okay um so um, I was going to start building the, uh, or, or, or talking to you about the uh, Chilla grills, but it dawned on me that um, I was working on some other bits and pieces and I wanted to, to sort of show you those and then we'll, we'll set them aside. Um, one of the things that uh, you can lose sight of with this kit is all the details that you don't see, uh, the Arboretum really, uh, the VIP lounge, the rec deck, um, you know, uh, the shuttle bay. But uh, it, it struck me as I was working on these things 
that, you know, part of the Zen nature of, hub, of this hobby is, is to build and finish all those things. So anyway, that's a long-winded way of saying, please paint and finish uh, all the parts of the model. You'll be glad you did. Okay, uh, before we talk about chiller grills, I wanted to brag a little bit about my Arboretum. Here it is. Um, I have completed it. This is a, a 3D uh, printed Arboretum, which you'll never see. That's about what you'll see. Um, but uh, for posterity, I thought we would, would, would show it. Um, now, I'm not putting the photo etch on the sides, guys, because you just will never see it. And the 3D details on this are extraordinary. So I gave it um, a very pale blue and I touched up the doors with some silver, but I spent, I kid you not, two hours on this Arboretum. Two hours. So um, I'm pretty, pretty happy with that. And um, I had a lot of fun building it. So that is that. And that's good. And um, I did a little bit of dry brushing on the top of it. And I put the cloud uh, decals on. So uh, this will now uh, sit on, on this, uh, on these tabs, uh, somehow. Curiously, this is a little wider, but it will, it will sit. Oops. It will sit. Let me get those out of there and try to do this because, uh, there. I don't know how much of that you can actually see. Let me get a flashlight in there and see if you can actually, there. Well, that's better. So if we're able to get a light on it, you'll pick up some greens, you'll pick up some bridge, you'll pick up some of the details. Um, so I am, uh, I, I know that um, it's gonna look good. I mean, for what you'll see in the windows. Now, of course, I'm using the laser cut acrylic windows, so I should be okay. So that, that's, that's sort of done. And um, I've finished the shuttle bay uh, floor. Here that is. Um, and I've obviously, I've got to install my lights and then I'll put the whole shuttle bay together and uh, that will be ready to install. And we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, when we get uh, to wiring the secondary hull with this harness because um, I have a feeling there's going to be some challenges involved there. And so I wanted to sort of record that for posterity. But anyway, uh, I'm pretty happy now with, oh, and I, I've got my VIP lounge and my rec deck ready to go. And here they are. So one VIP lounge, no waiting. And I added some vegetation. And I did the same for the rack deck. So those, those are ready to go and install. And I, I'm very happy with those. Now, I did quite a bit of work to them. So at this point, um, now in, in my previous uh, segment, I think I talked about 15 and a half hours, but I, I was wrong. I was at 19 hours. And so now I'm at about 23 hours. <laughs> That's 23 hours. So, uh, but anyway, um, I want to talk about these chiller grills because um, I started to, to think to myself, okay, how are we going to do these chiller grills? Now, um, I have uh, had several conversations with some friends about chiller grills, um, and I've seen several videos about chiller grills. And I've come to the conclusion that I'm going to um, do something else other than try to put one millimeter masking tape in all of these holes. Look at this. Um, so this is what I did just to start showing you. Okay. And what I realized was, was that first of all, I'm never going to get that tape to lay down perfectly. I'm just not. And if it buckles or turns when I hit it with my primer and then my, uh, my, my, my black paint, 
Uh, I'm gonna get all kinds of leaking in there. Now, can you clean that out with a toothpick? Absolutely. But um, I don't think you have to because there is another technique that I'm going to use. So I'm gonna remove that and say goodbye to that piece of uh, masking tape. And I bring in my Elmer's glow. Just, here it is. <laughs> it's, your, it's your Commodore Garden Elmer's glow. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour it into these tiny crevices. We're gonna pour it in. Now we might need two pours, but we're gonna pour it in, wipe it off, let it dry, and that is gonna be our mask. And from what I can tell, that is going to really, really do the job. Now, before we do all of that though, what I hadn't pulled out, and I should have, was, um, my zero, 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 zero grit wire wall. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, hit these. I'm gonna start doing it now. I'm gonna hit these with uh, some of this, this wire wall. Um, because what that's going to do is um, it's gonna give a little teeth for the paint to stick to this plastic. And it should do a really nice job um, of, of doing that and it'll also help with diffusion. So I'm going to do back and front. Now once these are painted black the idea is is that you diffuse your blue and uh, or you know whatever else you're doing right and uh, then you should be good to go. Uh, however I want mine to be purple so I am going to use some Tamiya Clear Purple, which I have found. And I'm going to hit the back of this with the purple. So the black will just be on the front. The purple will be on the, black, on the back, on the black, on the back. And then um, I will put a little dab on my SMD lighting strip. Uh, because my bundle came with blue lights um, as opposed to purple lights. Um, now, I think I'm going to be fine because by the time we're diffused and we've got our purple on the, in the back and our black on the front, um, I think we should be good to go. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with this method. I like, I like where this is going. Um, so let me just clean this up just a little bit here. So that's nice and clean. As you can see, I have, um, I've got this uh, sufficiently, um, sufficiently clean. Now, uh, what I like about the wire wall versus the sandpaper is, is it's not as rough, right? It's, it's not as scratchy as, as toothy. So what we're supposed to do now, according to uh, the instructions is, uh, let me do this. Yeah, there you go. Uh, uh, there we go. That's kind of fun, isn't it? Um, so we, you get this glue and you're going to put this glue in the crevices like such, okay? Now, I love the way I'm talking to you as if I'm teaching you. I'm not teaching you <laughs> because I have nothing to teach anyone other than just trying some tips that I think might work and um, we'll see, we'll see, right? We'll see if these tips work. Um, but I think, I think if I'm correct, this will work. Now, um, it is recommended, by the way, that you, um, that you, um, give this a couple of coats, okay? Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I am gonna let these dry and give them a couple of coats um, in case we've done that, which is uh, pulled most of the bloody glue out of the, the ridge. So we'll put a little more in there. Um, and a little more in there. Yeah, I would give this, I would definitely let this dry a couple of hours and um, 
give it a couple of coats for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, that's uh, definitely, definitely what I'm going to do. But then that should be very, actually, you know, that should be quite well masked. And um, let's just, I don't wanna, okay. Now, when this dries, we can hit it with a little bit of sandpaper as well, uh, just to get any more excess glue off of uh, the parts that you don't want glue on. But there we go. Um, well, that's pretty good. Uh, let, me, let me make sure it's in the cracks. It certainly is. Um, it certainly is. Let me show you there. So there, that's a good, that's a good angle on it. So it's in the cracks and we're going to let that dry. So we're going to do that to both of our units. Um, we're going to do that to both of our units. And then when that dries, um, we will, uh, yeah, I think when that dries, what we'll do is, is we'll probably definitely do a second coat uh, of this for sure. For sure. And then, um, and what I've just done with my Q-tip is kind of cool because you can't see it. Uh, but it is, it, it, in, in sort of cleaning up the top ridges, it's pushing more of the glue back into the lower ridges. And that's what we want to happen. So, yeah, I, 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 I'm pretty excited about this. I think this is going to be a good, I think this is going to be a good technique. And then, of course, um, yeah, I'm very happy with this. I think what we're going to do is we're going to get a really nice paint mask um, and we'll get this nice and clean. And then, of course, we can, you know, any residual, we'll just clean up with a with a toothpick um, once once we've got this where where we want it. So anyway, um, wanted to share this with you uh, and I wanted to record this for posterity. So uh, let me carry on. Um, I'm going to get glue in the other in the other one, let it dry, maybe get a second coat. I'm a couple of hours away and um, then we will uh, paint these uh, black. Um, we'll probably hit them. Uh, you don't have to hit them with a primer, I don't think. I think a couple of coats of black will be more than more than enough because we're going to hit the back with um, the the purple clear. So we should have a pretty decent light block, although it wouldn't hurt belts and suspenders, as my dear friend Lou says. Uh, to give it uh, just a, a dusting of primer before you hit it with the black. It can only help with light blocking, okay? Well, <clears throat> the easy breezy uh, section on how to paint your uh, chiller grills. <laughs> now, um, <clears throat> first of all, let me, let me say that um, if, if, uh, if you're sort of skimming through, I think you all know that um, this is sort of a chronicle of my endeavor. This is not, <laughs> these are not how-to videos. But, you know, if I've picked up any tips or tricks that work, I'll share them with all of you. And if you're building along or you're going to make an effort to, to break this kit out, um, hopefully uh, you, you won't make some of the mistakes that, that, that I make or think I'm making. But anyway, um, I, uh, as you saw uh, pr previously, um, I w was sort of going down this rabbit hole of get a whole bunch of PVA glue poured into uh, the, the crevices here. Because as we know, it is the smaller crevices that we are actually attempting to uh, to keep clear, and the fatter section uh, here, uh, the top, the sort of the top of this, uh, will all be, uh, I thought, black. Now, 
uh, we know that there is, uh, in fact, uh, a lot of research that's been done by a lot of wonderful modelers and, 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 and you know, the community shares, and it discovers that it is not, in fact, black, that they are, in fact, this sort of uh, lavender slash purple color, uh, gives the impression it's black under certain light, uh, but it was, in fact, uh, a, a purple color, so which went to a blue color um, when the uh, enterprise what became A and, and moved on. Um, so, but since I'm trying to do the motion picture version, uh, yes, from 1979. Now, I saw a preview in 78 and said this was a 78 film, and the great Lou corrected me, and he is correct. It was 79. But for me, it was 78. <laughs> Not that I'm being defensive in any, in any way, shape, or form, uh, you think. Um, anyway, um, so I went down this rabbit hole, and what came out the other side was, uh, for me, a train wreck, and I'll tell you why. So here, um, now, you know, uh, there have been several attempts here, so, uh, but here's what I found. I found that I could not get the PVA glue to sit nicely in the channel and get it all wiped off. Couldn't do it. I tried several ways. Now, um, I also, um, what I found it was doing was um, it was lifting, but it was leaving, l leaving these sort of little light areas. And, and I didn't want to have to go back and start touching this up. It, it didn't make a lot of sense to me. So while this may be a, true, a proven method for some, um, uh, through gross incompetence, I guess, I couldn't do it. Okay, so, um, but I did while I was uh, experimenting with the piece that I'm, I'm, I'm not using, um, is I did, I, I, I did manage to play with some other things. Now, um, it has been suggested that perhaps I went to some black vinyl. So I had these black vinyl strips from a masking set, um, and I, um, I, I tried those, and when I, uh, when I tried those, uh, they did lay down quite nicely. Um, however, however, um, I found that they did start to pull, so I'm concerned about that, and while I, uh, you can definitely get a nice clean line, and there are areas of this that I, I did very well with, uh, like, for instance, just about in this section here, I got perfect grid lines. I mean, almost that almost looked mechanical to me, and I was very happy with that, but um, not, not so much along the run. But while I was doing that, I managed to hit this with my um, uh, purple clear, my lavender clear uh, that I got from Tamiya, and it's awesome. Uh, it's absolutely awesome. Uh, let me uh, let me get you on the so let me show you. Let me just shine through this. And this is going to work a treat. And so you get this lovely you get this lovely purple effect. Um, now I don't know what you're seeing on camera because the truth of the matter is most likely you're getting blown out. And so um, I'm not sure what to do about. Oh, there you go. That's pretty cool. Look at that. How cool is that? That's going to work a charm, right? But you can see where um, I failed miserably. And that was due to um, all kinds of things. Now, um, I also, uh, in full disclosure, in, in full disclosure, <laughs> I ran out of black strips. But I'm concerned they'll peel off. And I don't think, I, I, think, that's, I think that's just going to be tacky. I really do. So while um, I, I, I'm giving myself A for effort, uh, I'm not going down that road. Here's what I am going to do. Um, <clears throat> with my uh, sparkling uh, new uh, <laughs> Chiller Grill uh, pieces, uh, here they are. Um, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to mask these lines in here, these grooves, with some very thin masking tape. Now I looked at the Tamiya. Here it is, the Tamiya. And they make this one mil, right? 
But I discovered through、um, research that one thirty-second is the correct width for that groove. Now, if you can believe it, and I know really, a lot of you here、uh, may be getting a headache right now,、um, is this is not as thin as the one thirty-second. It's almost the same. But this is thinner, so、um, I believe it's correct. So,、um, and this comes from、uh, a company、uh, called、uh, Chart Pack. Here they are. If you're following along, and this is the、uh, this is the code number for it.、Um, if、um, if you are so inclined. Um, we'll see how I do.、Um, I'm going to start、uh, installing that now, and then I will quickly report back to you to see how I did. I'm not going to do it on camera because、um, I do not want you to see a grown man cry. So I'm not going to do it.、Um, but I am definitely once I get this correct, and I think I can now.、Um, I'm definitely going to hit this、uh, the back of this with the purple. Now I I am going to whack this with. Uh, scour this with my zero 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 wire wool, and、uh, that is going to help with diffusion, and it's going to scuff this up. And、um, and then I'm going to hit it with a coat of primer,、um, uh, and then I'm going to hit, hit it with my black, and、um, and we we will hopefully reveal that result on camera in a in a in a little bit. <clears throat> okay, here's what I can tell you.、Um, <clears throat> There are things that are just guesses, and there are things that are facts. A fact, <laughs> an absolute fact. The small grids, the the、um, what what were they? The channels, the small channels on these plastic parts are beyond a shadow of a doubt one thirty second. Extraordinary. And the reason why this is a thing of beauty is because、uh, it is、um, it's it's a hard vinyl, and because it's a hard vinyl, it、uh, it's a little easier to,、uh, to to lay down. Where whereas the、uh, the masking tape is. It's very brittle, and it it's, it it doesn't have a rigidity to it that this does. Now, this is not cheap. I think I paid eight or nine dollars for it. I know, I know. If you can get away with putting PVA glue in your ridges,、um, and it works for you, do it. Save the money and do it.、Uh, Make them clean, and、uh, they'll look beautiful. I didn't have that kind of luck. Here's, you know, again,、um, what I had was or have is, I had I had this、uh, this peeling、uh, on mine, and、um, you can see that right there. It's just a fail. But once you get all this together. I'm pretty convinced you're going to have a really nice. It's going to be a really cool part. Okay, so here's what I've got. Here they are. Whoa. Okay, and they're in、um, all the way along, and I've left these little tails at the end so I can remove them. But they are in, so that's good, and I'm very, very happy with that.、Um, they're going to look great. So what I have to do now. Is I'm going to get a light dusting of my Tamiya、uh, primer, very dusty. I'm not. You hit this heavy, it's going to start dropping down into the cracks, and and it's just not going to work. So very light dusting. Let that dry. Hit it a couple of times so I know I've got a primer on there, and then I can hit it with my black, and then、uh, we will.、Um, 
hit the back with my uh, Tamiya uh, Lavender Clear. Um, and I'll, uh, I'll tell you what that is um, in the next segment. I'll bring it over and I'll, I'll show it to you so you can see that. Okay, so next step here, let's get these primed. Okay, don't worry. Chilla Grill Advancement will be in this segment, I promise you. <laughs> so do not adjust your sets. Um, they're drying. So uh, they were primed. And uh, I hit them with some of my Citadel black, uh, flat black, and that's drying. And I've hit the back of them with some of this. This is the, uh, the, the PS45 translucent purple. And um, I hit the back <coughs> of the grills with that. Now, in my lighting bundle from Trek Modeler, my lights, uh, uh, those, those uh, strip lights um, tape is blue. It, it, it's not purple. Um, now, um, could I decant some of this uh, and then probably drop a few drops on it? Possibly. But I think once I've diffused the back and they're going through the purple, I, I don't think it's going to be an issue. I, I think I'm going to be fine. But we'll test light it and take a look at that just to be sure. Anyway. While everything was drying, um, I, I thought we should uh, talk just a little bit about this uh, secondary hull um, because uh, what I'm trying to do also is chronicle some of the issues. Now, um, I have completed my shuttle bay. And uh, no, it is not going to have some of the extensive detail that uh, other shuttle bays have. Well, why is that, Phil? Well, it's a fair question, Phil. It's because um, I think the star of the show back here are going to be my chase lights, my landing lights. That's going to be the star of the show. And... Um, it's going to look pretty cool in there. Now, when you look back, um, whether you agree or disagree, I've got lots of depth and I've got my shuttle ready for takeoff. Now, if your shuttle is ready for takeoff, I don't think you'd have an awful lot of stuff hanging around there. Uh, that's, that's just my, uh, my opinion. <laughs> uh, you, can, you know... There, that's probably a nicer shot. Like, that's not bad, is it? Um, and uh, it's painted quite nicely. And I've got, um, I've got a sufficient amount of paint in there and some detail, which uh, you'll never see. And I know, I'm not complaining, but what I am wanting to talk about is that when I went to try and put it in, uh, y y you can't do it. I've tried 15 ways from Sunday. So the only way this shuttle fits into this piece here is if you remove this piece. So I cut that off. I cut that off and now my shuttle bait slides perfectly into position and um, it sits on its pins. Um, and so I am I'm super happy with that. And also, um, I won't be fighting with my arboretum because it's gonna uh, it's gonna sit above it's gonna sit above the arboretum. So and and you can see where I've channeled out for the for chase wires. Um, so that's looking that's looking pretty good. Um, and I'm um, I, I I feel good about that. So it it's in. And then. Um, once that is in and everything is wired under it, I can actually probably put my fan tail on, which I'll have to because that's going to get wired. And then um, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty good, good to go there. I mean, now that sounds like I'm bragging. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not bragging because to get to the part where I said I should be in pretty good shape, I've got a lot of wiring to do. I've, I've got a lot of, uh, I've got to get this all situated um, and then um, away we go because the actual, um, the actual top of, of this uh, secondary hull, the top of it, 
this piece, this piece here, right? Um, it it sits quite nicely on, on, on top of this, and you don't you don't need those uh, locator pins. It's okay. So I'm going to remove um, the I'm going to remove the top ones as well because I think that's just going to give me a lot more room for, for, for all of my wiring harnesses and you just don't need it. So, and that, that's sitting on there quite, quite nicely. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Nothing is, uh, n nothing is getting in the way. Now, um, having said that, as I'm looking at this, I, I'm realizing that I've got to get my pylons in here um, with my wiring harnesses um, that are going to connect to the nacelles. And so the idea is, is we'll have the saucer, secondary hull uh, with the, the pylons and the nacelles, and those will be the three elements. And once those are all sealed up and puttied up, I can, I can do my final puttying and, and priming. And we should be in bloody good shape, I have to say. Now, uh, it's more complicated than you think. And I'm not trying to be dramatic. I'm just being honest because uh, the pylons I know are a nightmare. And I know the fit's a nightmare. And then I've got to get everything into some kind of a jig so that I can make sure everything is strong and parallel so that when I, uh, you know, when we're looking at the final thing, you don't look at me and go, Okay, that's fine, but it all, it, it's all askew and it looks stupid. Because <laughs> uh, that's the potential here if, if, you, if, you don't, if you're not careful. You know, God bless Polar Lights for putting out this kit, but holy cow, uh, I, I think they dropped the ball on a few things. Um, that's just my opinion. But I'm grateful to have the kit. Don't get me wrong. I'm grateful to have it. And uh, each day that goes by, I feel less and less confident that I can actually carry this out. Now, I'm not saying that to be uh, flippant. Um, it's just that you've got to, there's so much detail that you've got to think about. Uh, I am certainly writing things down to make sure that I don't screw up my punch list. But what is going through my head is things like, okay, I need to put the clear click window in, but should I give it a primer coat first of the white? Why subject the windows and the masks to more than they need to? Uh, so shouldn't I do that and go ahead, just get a white coat on this uh, before I start putting uh, all the guts and everything in it because there's going to be overspray and, 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 ev and everything else. And so... Uh, that that's the way my my brain works, but um, I think these are good conversations to have. Now all the rest of the windows they just get popped in at the last minute, um, and um, so I'm I'm not really uh, concerned about them. Uh, they're going to fit in here beautifully. And if for some reason I lose one or something happens, um, I, I'm going to hit these with with a little bit of micro crystal clear where I where I can't uh, survive. Um, Okay, so I um, wanted to share that with you because um, I thought that that was very important. Okay, so now uh, in the next uh, segment, let's quickly get back to those chiller grills. Um, and uh, I think that will end this, uh, this part three. <laughs> we have a result. <laughs> we have a result. I am, I'm... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with myself. So um, let me just sit here for a minute and 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 gloat um, because to get these chiller grills painted nicely has meant actually um, quite a lot of work to figure this out. Um, uh, there's a lot of you out there who are a lot smarter than me and go, yeah, well, why didn't you just do that in the first place? It's like because I had convinced myself that the PVA glue in the grooves was was a home run, and it may well be. But sometimes um, technique is something you've got to do a few times before you get it right. And I found that every time I tried to wipe the top of the surface, uh, I was just taking too much glue out, out of the groove, and then paint would get on the side of it, and then you, you didn't get a, it. Anyway, it didn't work. It didn't work for me. This works for me. Check it out. 
um, here we are. And um, I have opened one up. Uh, and look at that. Look at that result. Crisp and clean. Um, super, super happy. Uh, I'm going to take the one uh, above it off for you on camera. Watch this. Here we go. I'm going to slowly peel this back. Here it comes. And there it goes. And I will lift up to camera. Look at that. Look at that. So that is a complete and utter success. I could not be happier and relieved. So what I'm going to do now is get all this off. And I'm going to hit it with a, uh, a coat of matte um, uh, clear uh, j just to kind of seal it in so I don't get any scratches on it and be very careful and, um, and, and put these somewhere uh, uh, away. But if you're going to do the chiller grills, uh, this is the way to do it. Oh, one other thing I wanted to share with you. One other thing is uh, the company Gold uh, puts out a, a line of, of, of um, rattle can paint. And they've got something called Dark Dark Purple. Now I have a can of it. And what I think I might do is just give this a dusting, just a quick dusting, um, to uh, to just to pick up some some purple vibe on this because um, be, because I I think the whole thing was probably supposed to be purple and I think that you know depending on how that hits the light it'll look purple but I, anyway I I could not be happy with the results so that's part three in part four. Um, we're going to take a look at the secondary hull and starting to install some of that lighting. Um, I'll also start to give the saucer um, a couple of, uh, well, I will, I, I will sand it uh, to 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, and then I'm going to hit it with another coat of, of the next round of white primer and, uh, and see what that looks like because the saucer then is basically ready to go, um, other than I've got to put in my rec deck and my VIP lounge, which I will, I, I will glue in. Um, but then I think we would be ready to seal that up, I think. Um, and then also in the next episode, we'll take a look at um, some of the challenges that are going to surround the engineering of the pylons connecting this, uh, the nas uh, the nacelles and the pylons and and how all of the uh, the, the the lighting bundle from Trek Modeler is going to, to to connect in into that and how I'm going to sort of rehearse how that's going to look because it's going to be in three stages uh, for final paint and detail before it's assembled um, at least that's that's the plan because I think it's going to be a lot easier to get to some of those details um in in its com various components than it is obviously going to be as a big bloody great ship so that's it anyway thank you for coming on this journey with me if you like the material or i should say uh the content um i would appreciate you liking and subscribing it means an awful lot to me share it with your friends get me some more subscribers come on you can do it <laughs> Now, I'm glad we're having fun together. I really am. If you want to reach me, hit me up at spruverse at gmail.com or drop a, a note in the comments. And um, I'm always happy to take a look and follow my In the Weeds photography of my details on my Instagram account, Spruverse. Okay? As always, everybody, I wish you all, please be well, be safe, build something, and I'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.